Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to look at another collaboration beer and this one is half Swedish on the home side, half English on the away side. The Swedish brewery I've reviewed a good number of beers from before and the English brewery I've only ever reviewed one from but they do have a very good reputation and from what I understand they're a little bit of a favourite of my friend Craig over at Kent Beer Reviews so do make sure you go and check out his channel actually, a very nice guy with some very nice beer reviews. I'll try and remember to put the link to that in the description below when I upload this video. But for this review then we are going to head up towards Gothenburg uh, on the west coast of Sweden, the Swedish craft beer capital as I've told you on many occasions and we're going to have a look at the Wonder Ale today. So this one comes in at 5.5% ABV, it's a pale ale and it's a collaboration with brew by numbers from Bermondsey in London over in England. So really curious to see how this one turns out. If memory serves me correctly, this one was released as part of the local and Smosiglit assortment in February 2020 through Systembolaget here in Sweden. And, uh, you know, hopefully it turns out to be a nice beer. I think this was one of two or three beers, actually, that I picked up from Stieg Berriots this time round. So really curious to see how this one turns out. Nice to encounter brew by numbers again. That's a brewery that I definitely want to check out when I make it to London next time because I know they are very good. So you might see a little out and about video in Bermondsey in London with this brewery. Hopefully Craig can join us for some tastings as well on that one. So um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries involved here before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website. It's the link to my other reviews that I've done from Steve Beariot's Brewery and from Brew by Numbers. Hopefully I can add more to Brew by Numbers in the next little while, but you will definitely see more Steve Beariot stuff sometime soon. There's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers I've reviewed for you and another one for all the English beers. This beer will appear in both of those because it is dual nationality or half and half, whatever you want to say. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Steak Berry, it's very great first off then, since these guys are the home brewery. So Steak Berry, it's very great, as I've told you before, are based in Gothenburg and the company was founded by Niels Holdkrantz and Richard Simonson and the pair own two bars that share the one kitchen. This is the Bar Kino and the Hagebjörns Cafe, both of which can be found on Linagatan in the middle of the city and these both opened back in 2007. The building in which you'll find these is actually an independent cinema, hence the name Bar Kino. If you want to have a little look at it, you can check out my sort of uh, bar brewery visit type video that I did for them uh that I did for them, that was a couple of months ago that I filmed that, but I show you the Hagabion's Cafe and the Barkino, which is down in the basement, and you can get a lot of uh, really interesting independent films going on there. Um, but originally the idea that they had was to brew a few beers that they could sell in the bars, and this led to them kegging the beers and eventually selling on to other pubs, and then to bottling the beers, which began in November of 2014. So the original beers that they were producing were mainly English and German styles, but this brewery really made their name when they started to brew the American styles of beer. The original head brewer that they had was Ole Anderson, who is the co-owner of OO Brewing, and he's now fully focused on that, and he was replaced for a period of time by Barnaby Struva, who was vice president at Three Floyds over in Münster, Indiana, near Chicago in America. But they've also recently opened up a new brewery in Party Halarna. In the city, they brew 5,000 litre batches at a time and they're also working on sour beers these days as well. I need to try and review a few more of those for you because it's mainly the kind of uh, regular beers that I've reviewed. So a few more Steve Berriot sours, I think, definitely need to be looked at on the channel. Uh, they also started selling their beers in these 440 milliliter cans, which they said helps them export a good bit more. Their collaboration beers and the higher alcohol ones tend to be sold in the taller, thinner 330 milliliter cans, the sort of... Um, how would you say, the sort of Red Bull sized cans actually. Uh, but they now have a, a brew team of Ollie Banks who used to work for Beavertown in London and Lucas Munro who used to work for All In Brewing who are one of the numerous gypsy breweries that you'll find around Gothenburg. They're a really nice brewery actually. Um, but they open up the brewery every so often to host a bar 
and they're also currently working to open up a bar in Stockholm as well and if you do want to visit a tap room as such you can go and visit the Hag Beyond's Cafe or indeed at the Bar Kino and you'll get a number of uh, the Steak Berriots and OO beers that you wouldn't necessarily find in other places. So um, yeah, a really nice brewery this one, one of the best known Swedish craft breweries these days mainly because of the, uh, the IPAs. The beers that I would recommend you try from these guys would be the Amazing Haze, the new and improved GBG week is uh, GBG beer week is also very nice. Um, I'm trying to think what other ones. Uh, I always enjoyed Muddle as well. Muddle was a really nice one, but I don't think they actually um, do that one anymore. But yeah, those the amazing haze is probably the best known beer that these guys have on the market at the moment. And I would recommend that you check out OO Brewing as well. As I say, Ole Anderson, the original Steve Berriot's brewer, running that one. So um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Steve Berriot's brewery for the moment. If you want to learn more of course you can check out the brewery website you can follow them on facebook and instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and if you're interested in the different beers that they've done you can check out the rate beer beer advocate and untapped pages to get some more information on those they do have a fairly extensive uh, listing on the website but uh, i think that's mainly their kind of core beers rather than the um how would you say rather than the, the sort of one-offs and collaborations and stuff like that so um, yeah make sure you check that out but let's move on to the English side of things then so as I mentioned to you earlier Brew by Numbers are based in Bermondsey in London and they were founded back in 2012 by Dave Seymour and Tom Hutchings. So apparently Dave and Tom met on a rock climbing tour in China and then they went on to travel around Asia together. So Tom went back to the UK after this while David ended up in Cairns in Australia where he encountered the Blue Sky Brewery which I've been to as well. My aunt and uncle uh, that are out in Australia used to live in Cairns actually and this brewery I think doesn't exist anymore. Um, but soon after that he moved to New Zealand and he bought a home brewing kit and just started experimenting away. So Tom had apparently always been interested in food because he came from Ludlow in Shropshire which apparently has a little bit of a culinary reputation but he's a long term friend as well of Toby Munn who is involved at Kernel and he visited Dave in Australia and then they tried the local craft beer together and so after that Dave was just kind of hooked himself uh, but when Dave got back from New Zealand they started planning their own brewery together him and uh, him and Tom and you know it just kind of took off from there. So when they started they were part time and held down other jobs. Tom was a freelance sound engineer and Dave trained as a barista and he worked with coffee after he learned that he hated working in kitchens. They started brewing it back in 2011 and they were helped a lot by Toby from Kernel of course and also Andy Smith from Partisan Brewing. So they wanted to stick their, to their home brewing roots and they continue to produce a lot of different beers and they've done this very, very successfully over the last few years. But uh, over the course of 2020, apparently they're planning to expand their brewing capacity up to 5,000 hectolitres of beer per year. They've now got two tap rooms as well. The original is at 79 Enid Street in Bermondsey and the newer tasting room is just kind of up a little bit at number 75. They also have the Peckham Barrel Store, which is where they have their barrel aging programme and they're also producing the sour beers there as well and they're looking at relocating to a new and bigger brewery at the moment as well but this brewery of course are very distinctive because of their numbering system so um, whenever you get a beer by numbers beer usually it has two numbers on it the number on the left is the number of the beer style and then you've got a straight line in between that and then you've got another number there which indicates the the number within the beer style if you like so if you have for example um, I think it was nine 09 that tells you it's a brown ale and then you have the line and then if you have like four or five or whatever that tells you it's the fifth uh, type of brown ale that they've brewed. So it's a really clever little system. It means you'll never get the same beers from brew by number so it's always worth visiting them to pick up a few different things but like you say that's one of the breweries that I definitely want to visit with Craig when I make it to London next time I might make it to London um, at the end of the year before I go back to Scotland we'll need to see about that but um, yeah Craig really rates um, brew by numbers from what I gather and uh, there's a lot of really good breweries in London these days Partizan that I mentioned earlier Kernel um, you know Beavertown were the ones who were really big back in the day as well there's a number of breweries down there that I haven't heard of. So if you want to, have, to learn a little bit more about the kind of southeast England breweries 
I'd recommend that you check out Craig over at Kent Beer Reviews and there's also J. Cole who's from just a little bit north of London in Ipswich. So um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Brew By Numbers for the moment. Um, the last beer that I tried from these guys, I can't even remember the name of it, um, but I remember it being a very good beer and it is a brewery that I would like to explore a little bit more. So like I say, maybe around Christmas time you'll see a few more reviews from them. But yeah, that's all you need to know about them. If you want to learn more, check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And of course, you can check out Rate Beer, Beer Advocate and Untapped and things to learn a little bit more uh, about the different beers that they've done because they are pretty damn prolific. I think they've produced in the region of like 350, 400 beers, something like that. Pretty impressive. So um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this one then. So as you can see, you've got some really nice artwork and this is definitely the Stieg Berriot's style of artwork. You can see my can, the label got a little bit mashed. Uh, I don't know what happened to that, if that was just how it was put on or whether that's, um, you know, maybe the glue's run a little bit and it's just been pushed down. But um, yeah, really nice artwork on this one, the kind of rainbow with the almost Disney castle in the background, so the Wonder Ale. But then you can see on the back there is the Stieg Berriot's brewery symbol and there is Brew by Numbers under there as well. The new artwork that Brew by Numbers have incidentally is really very nice but they're describing this one as the Wonder Ale, a hoppy ale coming in at 5.5% ABV. The artwork in this one apparently is from Martin Jakobsson. So um, yeah let's get this guy out then and we'll get on with the taste and I'm really curious to see how this beer turns out actually. As I said, this one was released on, I think it was released like this, is it the 2nd or 3rd of February they came out this month? Can't quite remember, but this one was released as part of the um, February Local and Small Seed League assortment in Seestembolaga. So, um, yeah, quite cool as I say to encounter Brew By Numbers again after quite a wee while. But as you can see with this beer, it's poured a lovely, kind of bright, uh, I'd describe this one as being, in, being more towards the orangey end of the spectrum but you can see there's a solid finger and a half of a frothy kind of cream coloured head on this one one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass there's a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there but overall it does look very very nice I have to say um, pretty much what you would expect from a modern paleo these days you can see the head is just fading away uh, a little bit but it does have a good level of retention on it actually and that's probably this beer must have a good little bit of wheat in it too um, help the head retain like that. Wheat is very good from what I understand it helping the, the head stay around for a little bit but it certainly looks the part you can see if I put my fingers behind the, the glass there it's quite hazy and uh, definitely more on that kind of New England hazy end of the spectrum. So let's have a look at the aroma then and see how we get on with this one. Oh yeah that's quite nice. Some, just straight away with this one you've got some lovely um, juicy fruits coming out of this beer. Could this be Idaho 7 that's in here? There's just something about the beer that makes me think maybe it's uh, it's Idaho 7 that's in this one. It's got a lovely kind of passion fruity and mangoey note coming out of it. Could be Galaxy and Idaho 7 right enough. Um, but yeah, some nice slightly stronger passion fruity notes in there. Juicy mangoes, a little bit of a kind of pineapple note as well in my mind. Not getting so much in this in the way of like the kind of apricotty or um, or papaya type notes that you can sometimes get. For me, this has got a bit of passion fruit at the back, some mangoes and some pineapple. It really is leaning towards that end of the spectrum. There's almost a little bit of a kind of zestiness to it as well, like a little touch of lemon limey note, leaning a bit more towards the uh, the lemony side of things actually. Could it be a little bit of centennial that's in here? Or, I don't know, the other one would be lemon drop. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I always like playing Guess the Hops with these beers because Steve Berriots don't tell you what hops they've used so it always makes for a little bit of fun but in terms of the fruitiness this one to me lovely and juicy and tropical but at the same time it does have a little bit of a kind of citrusy zesty kind of quality to it which I think is really very very nice actually so um, yeah take a bit of time and just enjoy that in terms of the the green side of the hops for me this one is quite um it leans towards the floral side of things. It's got a little bit of a spicy floral note to it. It's not piney and resinous. There's a wee bit of um, of grassiness to this one, but I think it's really more kind of... Um, I think it is a little bit more sort of floral and... Uh, yeah, it's really more kind of floral and very slightly spicy. Could it be a little bit of Columbus or something that's underneath this? 
yeah, that's quite interesting actually. But um, yeah, underneath that, the malt base comes across as being a little bit crisp. I think there is a little bit of wheatiness there. You do get a bit of a white bready quality. There's a little bit of a biscuity note to it as well, but you can feel the um, how do you say the the sort of wheaty notes just pushing their way out of this one a little bit. So it does come across as quite bitey this beer, but that can uh, always turn out quite nicely. I do enjoy a nice bitey IPA, so I'm curious to see how it turns out in the, the paleo form. But let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on. This one is the Wonder Ale, a 5.5% American paleo uh, from Stigbjerg's Burger in Gothenburg, Utebori, here in Sweden, brewed in collaboration with Brew by Numbers from Bermondsey in London in England. Let's get stuck into this beer. Slanja, skull. That's really pretty nice actually, I like this one. Um, it's really quite easy to drink and I mean at 5.5% when it's a paleo, you know, it is going to be actually. Um, and the thing I will say about this, because I've commented in a few videos recently, that when it comes to the, the hazy IPAs and things, I mean, obviously, um, as you go up in alcohol content and things, these beers are focused on having a big smooth malt base. You can feel the malt bases just getting a little bit sort of thicker and things as you go up the ladder. Um, but this one to me does have a really nice level of body to it actually and I suspect, just going by the flavour of it, I suspect it's because it's got a bit more wheaty character to it so it's a little bit more bitey so maybe to get the best out of the, the paleos and things like that it is good to use a little bit more uh, to put a, to dedicate a little bit more of your malt base to wheat actually that's an interesting point with this but I certainly like this, this could well be the best sort of lower alcohol beer that I've had from Steve Berry it's come to think of it. And you know most of the beers, the, the sort of pale ale IPA type things that I've had from Steve Berry, I think this fairly standard ABV tends to be 6.5%. Um, um, so this one, yeah, I say low, but it's not that much lower in fairness, but I think both breweries have done a nice job of this, so thumbs up to both Steve Beriots and uh, Brew by Numbers. Uh, in some ways, Brew by Numbers, they remind me a little bit of Beer Blue Tech in Gothenburg as well, and vice versa, because they're always, you know, trying different things with uh, with new recipes and stuff like that, so yeah, that would be an interesting collaboration, Brew by Numbers and Beer Blue Tech. Watch this space, that might, you know, you might see that at some point in the future. But um, yeah, the quality of this is nice. Let's try and break down the flavour a little bit then and see how we get on. The more you drink of this too, the kind of juicier it gets as well. But yeah, middle of your palate then, you can feel that nice white bready, wheaty malt base just blank at the middle of your tongue. Um, as you go further into the flavour, it just smoothens out a little bit. You do get a wee bit of an oaty creaminess at the front part of your palate there, but really you can feel the um, you can feel the nice smooth kind of wheaty qualities and that bitey bit out of the wheat just sitting there at the back of your palate, which is is really quite nice. Um, I like how that all goes together, to be honest with you. I kind of wish I bought a few more cans of this now, actually. But that said, I don't drink the beer. I don't. Well, I don't drink beer really outside of my my beer videos these days. Um, but yeah, this is this really is very nice. I do wonder if there's a wee touch of Pilsner malt at the back um, in this one, because at the back of the palate you do just get that little bit of crispness out of this beer, but you can get the nice bitey, wheaty notes there, but if you focus on the very centre of your palate, you are going to notice there is a little bit of a sweet kind of biscuity note there, and as you move out from the very centre of your palate, it gradually gets a little bit more grainy. It's a bit like a kind of McVitie's digestive kind of thing, but in the back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of earthiness there. It's, um, I would say it's fairly... It's fairly light, it's not the darkest of earthiness that you're going to come across, but as you move further forward along the palate, you've got a nice kind of floral, aromatic quality um, at the front corners of the palate. It's a little bit spicy. Round the front curve of the tongue, it gets a little bit lighter and more grassy. Then behind the front curve of the palate, you've got that nice oily bubble where those juicy, fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. 
So I would say that overall this beer on the green side of things it leans towards that kind of floral end of the spectrum which is pretty nice actually. So yeah, I like how that goes together. Um, it does get gradually more grassy the further you go into the aftertaste though. So behind the front curve of the palate you've got that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. And for me, this one's quite interesting. If you go to the back of that oily bubble, it's got a little it's got a little touch of a darker kind of passion fruit note to it, but it really becomes very soft and tropical um, in front of that. It gets it's got there's a little bit of mango there. Uh, as you move further forward from that, it really evolves to become more kind of pineapple-y. There's there is maybe a wee teeny bit of like a an apricotty note or something like that in this. Um, I, I do wonder if this is Idaho 7 that's in here um, because some of the tropical notes that you're getting out of this this particular beer are really really very nice actually and uh, there's just something in my head that's saying that this is Idaho 7. Um, if any of you know any better of course let me know in the description below but the light kind of tropical notes that you get out of this beer is really very nice and I mean if it was, the, if the passion fruit was coming from Galaxy um, I think it would just be a hell of a lot more pungent. Galaxy has got a, lot, a little bit more of a kick to it in my experience um, and of course you've got Simcoe as well where it gives you the kind of lighter um, juicy sort of passion fruit. You've got things like Rakao and stuff like that over in uh, New Zealand and things. I'm not quite sure it's a New Zealand hop that's in this. It doesn't seem oily enough to be uh, to be a New Zealand hop. But regardless of what it is, the way that the fruits come out in this is really nice. It's quite straight up. It's got a little bit of uh, of mango. It's got a little bit of dark passion fruit at the back. Like I said, it evolves to be more mango. Then you've got some nice um, kind of pineapple notes just on the front edge of your tongue. And you will notice that on the very tip of the palate too, you have a little bit of a kind of um, you have a little bit of a kind of lemony, citrusy sort of thing. So um, yeah, it does have a little bit of a citrusy, zesty kind of quality the further you go into the aftertaste as well. So I like how this one goes together. This gets a thumbs up from me. Um, I went even go as far as saying that this this could be the my favourite Stieg Berriot's beer that I've had for a little while actually. So a bit of a shame if this is only a one-off brew to be honest. So yeah, um, in terms of the mouthfeel then, you know, um, it's a, it's a mid-bodied beer, it's at the bottom end of mid-bodied, the carbonation is really smooth, it does have a wee touch of, um, the mouthfeel is mainly smooth, but it does have a wee touch of wetness and oiliness to it, which is nice, some nice kind of floral aromaticity in there. Um, it's got, in terms of IBUs, I think we are talking the fairly standard sort of 30 that you'll get from these hazy beer styles. Um, nice little bit of a, an oily, juicy kind of fruit sort of thing as I said, and also a little bit of a biscuity sweetness to this beer as well. But um, overall, a really nice uh, paleo this one, and I'm glad I was able to try it. Cool to encounter, brew by numbers again, and in terms of steep berries, I think this is probably one of my favourite beers that I've had from them for a little while actually, so yeah. Take that as you will. So have a, I would recommend you have a go at this one. It's probably one of the better, lighter alcohol beers that I've had from Steve Berriot's. And it does make me very curious to try a few more things from uh, from Brew by Numbers as well. So hopefully that's something I can sort out with Craig at some point in the future. But um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. The Wonder Ale at 5.5% an American Paleo, Hazy Paleo from Stieg Bergsbreggery in Gothenburg here in Sweden and Brew by Numbers from Bermondsey in London. Let's leave it at that. Thank you again for watching my reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know your favourite beers from Stieg Bergs and your favourite beers or beer styles I guess is probably better for Brew by Numbers because there's always different things going on but hopefully we can return to Brew by Numbers at some point soon and you will definitely be seeing some more Steve Berriot's beers over the next little while. Thanks again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. Until the next time, slander just now, take care and I'll catch you later. Cheers.